Hey guys and welcome back. This video is going to be a little bit different than normal because I'm always preaching how much I love this motorcycle but today is going to be a little bit different. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this motorcycle and this list of five items is probably taking me entirely too long to come up with. As to me, this is still the best bike I could buy within my interests of riding for the streets. So the first thing that I would say that I dislike the most about this motorcycle is going to have to go to the paint and the clear coat. Now I know it's black and if you've ever had a black car before you know how you get the swirls in them and they start looking like crap really easily. This happens way faster than a car. <laughs> this is definitely low end clear coat and paint. You need to be careful with how you wash it. Like you can't buy this spray on wax stuff and spray it on a bug and expect it to clean the bike without scratching the crap out of it. Even with a nice microfiber cloth, I've noticed that I end up scratching the crap out of the paint. So you really need to wash the bike with soap and water, do a real wash if you have any kind of mud or junk or dead bugs slotted all over your paint. Get it off with some water and soap first and then go ahead and do your wax process. And I definitely always wax the bike afterwards because especially knowing how bad this paint is, so that's got to be the thing that has probably annoyed me the most about the bike is how crappy the clear coat is on it. The next thing that really sucked to me about buying this bike was I came from a 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 636, the ZX6R, which is ungodly faster than this motorcycle. Yes, it has 636 cc's and this motorcycle has 689 cc's. So insurance companies are just dumb. They don't know that this bike is slower and safer than that 636 could ever be. And my insurance went up like $20 a month going from a freaking basically a race motorcycle to a, a twin motorcycle with much less power. So that was really annoying to me that insurance companies are just dumb. But that, in my opinion, definitely sucked. It's totally not cool. Like half the reason why I never bought a leader bike was I didn't want to pay the insurance cost. Because back then when I bought my CBR 600, I want to say it was like 100 bucks a month for me to have that CBR 600, like 110 I think where it would be like 190 if I was to buy a leader bike at the time, which I was looking at the R1 or the CBR 1000RR. I was looking at either one of those bikes. But the insurance cost is absolutely insane, and it's dumb how it's based off of CCs. The next thing I would go to is going to be the brakes. And don't get me wrong, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the brakes for the street. When I took it out on the track the other day and I started trying to push my limits a little bit and start getting a little bit hotter into corners and trail braking a little heavier coming in, I would get a lot of spongy feel out of it. Like the feel totally changed drastically throughout the day. And it would depend on whether or not I just got off the track for, like the way the track day works is you're 20 minutes on the track and 40 minutes off because there's A, B, and C groups. So you get 20 minutes and you just rotate out. So depending on whether I just first got on the track versus close to the end of that 20 minute track session, those brakes would act completely different. It was very strange to me how bad the fuel would get towards the end. But like I said, I, I don't think they're bad for the street. I have not noticed a problem while riding back roads trying to have some fun on this bike and daily commuting it. It, it, it runs, they're great. There's nothing wrong with them. Just keep in mind when you start pushing them really, really hard, when you're out on like a track experience, you, you will quickly note the heavy change in feel as they warm up. And I personally didn't like it. So that's something I don't like about the bike, but it is obviously a fix. We can get the steel braided lines, we can get some better pads, or we can upgrade the calipers to Brembo's if we want, however we want to do it. We have a nice base, which is cool. We already have that Brembo Master, so I would bet money on some steel braided brake lines and some different brake pads themselves would probably be enough to kind of squash that and make it cool and make that feel a little bit better. And the next thing I would say is going to be tires. Now, sadly, that isn't the R7's fault that its tires wear out fast. It's a common mid-range to high-range super sport styled motorcycle that has nice soft tires on it, which is exactly what you want because you want that grip. Especially if you're trying to push your bike, you want it to have nice grip. But the negative side of that is you wear out tires really, really fast. I pushed that rear tire to 4,000. It definitely needed a new one a while back. 
this front tire it's got 5,000 on it and it is definitely no good to me anymore uh, I probably shouldn't have rode it on the track to be honest with you the way it is but I am being totally cheap right now and I'm going through trying to get myself through a second rear and push this front as far as I possibly can so I'm just gonna take it a little bit easier put a couple thousand miles on it max and go ahead and buy all new front and rear and get some tires that I want I don't know what kind of tires you guys think is cool <laughs> I've been hearing Dunlop Q4s being a good choice I know that the tire that I liked a lot was the Diablo Rosos I had Rosso twos on my Ninja 400 before I did a track day and I loved them on that bike and then my Ducati Sport S came with Rosso threes and I enjoyed those quite a bit so for me definitely I love the Pirellis and these are Battle Axe S22s I can't say anything bad about them I've I've definitely slid them a few times I would I don't know if that's the tires fault as much as the instances I was in where I did slide them and at least it, my riding experience is considerably more than it was back when I was using the S21 so um, I'm okay with a little bit of sliding here and there I don't intentionally go try and slide the rear but if it does I don't freak out like I used to and in most instances I've slid the front it was when I knew I was doing something wrong more importantly the most frequent time I slide the front is being on throttle at lean angle I'll feel that front tire just kind of dip in because I'm applying because I'm taking all the weight off of that front tire while I'm at a lean angle going through a corner using throttle to get through the corner which is the complete opposite of what you should be doing you should be trail braking into the corner and then applying throttle as you're standing the bike up not being in the corner applying throttle at heavy lean angle that's what starts sliding the front because you're losing all the weight of, on the front of the motorcycle but that's my tire complaints if you guys know what tire I should get or you have a good idea, please link it down in the description below. Tell me what tire you like the best and what tire you think I should buy for this bike. I do like sticky. I do play a little too hard on the edges of my tires, so I want it to grip and I want to feel comfortable. And for the fifth thing I dislike about this motorcycle is going to go to ABS. I know, I know in every video I talk about how great ABS is. It's fantastic. I love it. You should definitely have it on every bike. My problem with ABS is I want the ability to turn it off. Maybe not the front tire. I am fine with the front tire having ABS. Even with being out on a track day and getting into heavy braking, I still don't trigger the front ABS. And I'm not a stoppy guy, so I'm not going to be trying to do stoppies on this bike. So I don't care to turn off the, the front ABS. The rear ABS, however, I would love to. I have a steep driveway that I go down, and I don't want to apply the front brake. It is gravel. I want to be able to use my rear brake. And if I slide out my rear tire, I am perfectly fine with that. I am perfectly fine with sliding the rear end of the bike sideways and putting my foot on the ground to stop the bike just like you would on a dirt bike. I'm not going very fast, but the ABS just completely disengages and the bike will just keep going down the hill and it's scary as crap. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't a dirt bike. It's not for the dirt. I get it. You shouldn't be taking it off-road, but there are always instances where you need to or you want to or whatever. I want to do what I want with my bike and I don't want you to tell me I can't just because it's a street bike. But if there was an ability to just shut off the rear, that would be great. It'd be nice to be able to toggle it on and off. And that was something I thought was really cool because I've been looking at the 2022 RC390. I think that little bike would be awesome for a little track bike and then also a bike that maybe my son could ride to school and work because right now the only thing I have for him to ride is the 250L and the Grom and I really don't want him on the Grom. He's pretty small already and then a little tiny Grom. It's so hard to see a little Grom on the road. I'd rather him be riding a full-size motorcycle that can maybe be seen. But needless to say, that RC390, if you read through the specs of it, is absolutely insane. It is super cool. In fact, there was a YouTube video I watched on it comparing it to a Ninja 400, and I think her name was Kate. She was doing her, you know, impressions of the 400 and the RC390, the new one. And she was actually my instructor at the track day class, which was super cool. Uh, you should go check that video out if you like the smaller bikes. Uh, it came to the same conclusion I kind of thought about the Ninja 400 versus the RC390. Is the Ninja 400 still the better bike? It's still the better choice. Go watch that video if you want to get more in-depth information of why I think they spelled it out just right. I would love to have the RC390 if I was not comparing it to a Ninja 400. I love the concept, the idea of quick shifter auto blipper 
better suspension. Uh, ABS, they call it Supermoto ABS. You could turn off the rear freaking ABS on the little RC390. How freaking cool is that? So if you wanted to back it in or slide that rear tire around, you totally could. Just shut off that ABS and not only can you shut it off, you can shut it off while you're riding the bike. My Honda CRF 250L, it has that as well. Like when you go off road, you could shut off the rear ABS on the 250L and that's super cool. But you cannot do that while the bike's rolling. And every time you shut off the bike, the ABS turns back on. If you're out in the middle of nowhere riding around having a good time and you stop and whatever, take some photos, get something to eat, hang out for a bit and you get back on your bike, your ABS is back on and you'll ride away and then have to go and forget to turn it back off. And so I was constantly stopping to turn the damn thing back on. But I think motorcycles should have that. And that little RC390 has it. There's a lot of negatives on the RC390. It is not the best bike. And if you're interested in that, go check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. But those are the five things I dislike the most about this motorcycle. As you guys know, I passionately love it and I recommend it to anyone and everyone that wants to have a nice super sport for the streets. A little race bike for the streets that's gonna have a great power output for the street. So thanks again for watching guys. I hope you got something out of this. Next week, I will be installing the air intake. I've already figured out what to do and how to do it. I already have a lineup on getting the bike tuned. So next week's video, we'll go ahead and do the installation for the air intake. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you next week. Peace.